talking today a lot around the AirPods Pro, but in the wider context, we're looking at them as an example of a change that's happening in the hearing technology landscape. And we're seeing a drive to improve access and affordability of hearing technologies with a lot of new products recently coming on the market. Now, I'm particularly interested in apps and devices to help people hear and communicate better. So when the new hearing features were introduced for the Apple AirPods Pro, I was really keen to uh, explore them. So here I'm going to share some of the most interesting insights and learnings. So first up, uh, what are the hearing features available in Apple AirPods Pro? How to set them up and personalize them as hearing devices? We're then going to look at the performance characteristics and uh, go through some capabilities and limitations. So what are the hearing features available in AirPods Pro? Now, most people who own AirPods Pro probably bought them as a nicely designed earphone with good quality audio, integrates well with their phone. They probably don't realize that they also contain um, some really useful hearing features. Uh, so here are some that I uh, think are quite useful. Firstly, there's Live Listen. Now, this has been around a while since 2014, and that's when you can use your iPhone as a remote microphone. Then you place it uh, closer to the person speaking and it streams the amplified audio direct to your AirPods or your compatible hearing aids. And it's really useful in a noisy environment or if you're listening from across the room. Now, the AirPods Pro also have three noise control modes. Uh, there's active noise cancellation. So apart from the obvious benefit where you can uh, cancel out annoying sounds, um, you can also listen to, let's for example, your music or podcast in a noisy environment without having to turn the volume level up really loud. Um, so you can maintain safer listening levels. The other really interesting one here is transparency mode, and that's when you can let the outside sound in and be more aware of what's happening around you. The next one, background sounds. This has recently come in. Uh, you can listen and play uh, calming sounds like a stream or the sound of rain, and this can help um, alleviate tinnitus. And then the last two, uh, what we're really interested in for this talk, headphone accommodations. You can customize your headphones to your hearing needs and individual preferences, so you can hear sound clearer. Um, and also conversation boost. Um, and this is to help hearing better in noise. So to delve into those last two a bit further, headphone accommodations, it was released in iOS 14, so late 2020, what it does is it amplifies the sounds based on the user's hearing needs. And there's a few different ways where you can set this up. Uh, you can use an audiogram, which is going to give you the most personalized sound, or you can do quick um, A-B listening comparisons. Um, you can hear different versions of speech or music and choose the one you prefer, and the system will um, choose the appropriate uh, preset profile. So they have three preset profiles uh, called balance tone, vocal range or brightness, and they can be applied at three different strengths. Now, a really good benefit of the headphone accommodations is that there's no Bluetooth delay in the processed audio. And if you've used some hearing amplification apps, you may have noticed a delay or echo that affects the listening experience. Um, with the AirPods Pro, they do the audio processing in the H1 chip, in the AirPod, in the ear, so you don't get that delay from relaying the audio from the phone uh, to the earphone. And headphone accommodations can be applied to phone calls, media, and to the sounds around you. That last one, of course, making AirPods more like hearables. Now, the next one, Conversation Boost, this was released with iOS 15, so just towards the end of last year. It aims to help improve communication in noisy environments. So we know that hearing impaired people have increased difficulty understanding speech and background noise. We can think of this as sort of like a directional mode. So in the Apple terms, it uses 
uh, computational audio and beam forming to focus on the person speaking in front. Um, at the same time, it's attenuating sounds um, uh, around the listen to the background noise. Um, so it's these two features, headphone accommodations um, and conversation booths that we're most interested in when we're comparing the AirPods to hearing aids. Uh, so now we're familiar with the main hearing features. How do we set them up and personalize AirPods Pro as hearing devices? Um, now, it's not as easy as one might expect. It's actually these features are buried in layers of menus um, and setup can be a bit tricky. So this next part of the talk is a, a kind of tutorial, um, but rather than rehash some of the instruction guides that are out there, I'm going to focus specifically on how to tune headphone accommodations uh, using an audiogram and also uh, share some helpful tips. OK, so setting up headphone accommodations, um, you go to the settings menu. Uh, tap on accessibility. Uh, then you want to scroll down and find the section about hearing. So here is hearing. You tap on audio visual um, and then go to headphone accommodations. Uh, you want to switch headphone accommodations on and then go to custom audio setup. Now this recording will be available after the event, so if you don't <laughs> capture everything now, you can check back later. Um, so then we want to add a custom audiogram. So we go to add audiogram, and there's a few different ways we can do this. Uh, we can use the camera to take a photograph of the audiogram. Uh, you can use a photo that you've already got stored. Um, or you can upload a file, for example, a PDF. Uh, I'm going to go through and take a photo with the camera because that's kind of fun. Uh, I've in this example, I just pulled up um, an audiogram on my screen on my monitor, uh, but you could equally have one uh, printed out on paper and the iPhone goes directly to camera mode. You don't have to do anything. It actually automatically finds that audiogram in the camera view and takes a photo. So you don't even actually have to press that, that button down the bottom. And it then displays what it thinks is the audiogram. Uh, now, I think that that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. You can try and retake that photo if you want. But we can move on and then it analyzes the audiogram. And this part does require an internet connection. If you don't have internet available, uh, you can enter the values manually. Um, but with an audio, uh, an internet connection, it'll go through and pull out uh, the relevant hearing thresholds from that image. Now we see that it does pretty well, but it's not perfect. And we can scroll down if we want and look at uh, some values that are missing and go in and enter those manually and correct any others that it may have not quite got right. Uh, generally, I find that if there are hearing thresholds that are the same in the left and the right ear, it, it tends to miss one of them. Um, but you can go through and then confirm your data. Now, uh, one thing I've noticed is that the uh, it's limited to the frequencies you see here, so 125 hertz up to 8 kilohertz in octave steps. And there doesn't seem to be a way to input any other frequencies that you might have. The next step is then to listen to audio samples with the recommended settings. So that's using this audiogram that you've just put in. And you can go through and listen to it, uh, switch between the custom, the customized audio or the standard. Um, and choose the one you like. Uh, so if it's all working well, the one that uses the audiogram should be uh, should sound better to you. Um, so that's the uh, setting up with the headphone accommodations to the audiogram. What I also recommend is to do an ear tip fit. And what this will do is um, 
just check that the air tips, you've got the right size, they're sealing in the air canal properly, and that can really affect the sound quality. It can affect the performance of the noise reduction and then just make things generally more comfortable. So to do this, you go to settings and Bluetooth. Um, you want to click on the little eye icon next to the name of your AirPods Pro in the device list. And it will bring up this menu and go to test air tip fit. Um, so this is the uh, test. Uh, you want to place the AirPods in your ear, which they should be already if they're connected. And when you press play, it will play some music. Now you want it and it will come back with a result for each ear. Now in this case, it's come back with um, a sort of a yellow result where it says adjust or try a different ear tip. So you just want to try wiggling it around, uh, see if you can get a better fit. Um, and if that doesn't run the test again, if that doesn't work, uh, you may want to switch to one of the different ear tip sizes. But with a good result that comes back green, that's a good seal. Um, and the right size will not only be more comfortable, it reduce audio leaking out, you'll get better low frequencies um, and reduce that ambient noise leaking in. Uh, the second tip I have is to create a hearing shortcut in the control center. Um, to do this, go to settings and then control center. Uh, you want to look that the, the hearing uh, icon is not in, in the included controls. So scroll down and find it um, and then press the little plus icon next to hearing. Now what that will do is when you go to control center, it will put down um, the bottom um, this extra button with the ear on it. So that's your hearing shortcut control. And what that means is that you can then now do adjustments for headphone accommodations from the control center and you don't have to go back into um, all those accessibility setting menus. So when you press on that, you can see all the AirPods um, options, uh, headphone accommodations. You want to make sure transparency is in there so that they're going to work as hearing devices. You can adjust the amplification, so that's like a volume control, the balance, which is the balance between the left and the right audio channels. Uh, scroll down a bit further, you also have control over the tone, so whether it's more low frequency, um, darker, or more high frequency, um, which they call brighter. And you can adjust the ambient noise reduction and turn conversation boost on or off. Um, so these parameters can be easily adjusted by the user um, in the situation. In the current situation, however, they feel they need um, extra boost or not. All right, so how are we going? Uh, we're all set up. What is the performance characteristics of AirPods Pro hearing features? So we performed electroacoustic measurements in the lab. Um, both in quiet and in background noise. Uh, first, we wanted to determine the amount of amplification and the frequency response provided by headphone accommodations. And for these measurements, we used an ear simulator, which is widely used for standardized acoustic testing of headphones and hearing aids. And we did um, measurements with the speech stimulus level at three levels, so 50 dB SBL, which is a soft speech level, 65 um, an average level, and at 80 dB SBL, a loud level. And these are the profiles, um, the headphone accommodation gain for two preset profiles at moderate strength. So for the balanced tone profile on the left, uh, we see that headphone accommodations gain at a level of 65 dB SPL um, gave a boost of about 12 dB between 2 and 5 kilohertz. Um, and we can see the compression, uh, there's more amplification for the soft sound than there is for the loud sounds. Um, on the right, for the brightness preset, uh, there's more boost in the high frequencies with a 15 dB gain at uh, 4 kilohertz um, at that 65 dB SPL input level. 
Now looking at how much gain control the user has with the quick adjustment settings, um, with the amplification control, they can slide it from zero to 100%. And this gives them a 12 dB range of gain adjustment. 8, 18 a.m. Oh, and with the tone control, this is a spectral tilt, um, which pivots around about 1.5 kilohertz. Um, and going from 0%, which is the darker setting to 100% brighter, the user can increase amplification of the high frequencies by 8 dB while simultaneously decreasing the low frequencies um, by up to 4 dB. Now, if we want to look at how much gain can um, get a better fitting of, sorry, if we want to get a better understanding of what the fitting algorithm is in the AirPods Pro, um, we can look at uh, in pushing a custom audiogram and measuring the output levels. So here are two custom audiograms we've looked at. We've got one with a mild to moderate sloping loss um, from 20 to 50 uh, dBHL and a flat um, 40 dB loss. And we want to know how headphone accommodation gains compares to a typical hearing aid prescription. Uh, so we can see here again, the headphone accommodations gain with the solid lines um, at 50, 65 and 80 dB SBL um, speech levels. Um, and we compare that to the NAL NL2 um, prescription, so the insertion gain, which is shown by the dotted lines. And we can see a really close match in the red, uh, which is the average speech levels, um, but there's greater amplification with headphone accommodation. So in the yellow at loud speech levels and lower amplification um, with headphone accommodations at soft speech levels. A similar result for the flat uh, 40 dBHL audiogram, um, greater amplification at loud levels and lower amplification at soft levels. So we can expect there to be differences for the AirPods Pro compared to hearing aids um, that have been programmed to meet NAL and our two targets in the audibility of soft sounds and for loudness comfort. Uh, our next phase was to look at how AirPods Pro perform in background noise. So shown here is one of our acoustic test rooms um, with a circular array of loudspeakers. Um, we have a person sitting on that chair in the middle wearing AirPods Pro. We put probe tube microphones um, in their ear to measure the level uh, near the eardrum. There's multi-talker babble noise um, coming out from the speakers at a level of 65 dB SBL, and we use a signal to noise ratio of minus three dB, which is quite a challenging or common um, signal to noise ratio experienced, for example, in restaurants. And then we use this phase inversion method uh, to calculate the signal to noise ratio. I won't go into too much detail, but basically we play two successive recordings, one with the uh, phase of the speech signal inverted. And then when we subtract those signals, we can extract the speech. When we add them, we can extract the noise and then calculate the signal to noise ratio. Um, so looking at the effect of these new features, so there's conversation boost and ambient noise reduction. We calculated the difference in the signal to noise ratio between using headphone accommodations with these features um, compared to with, with these features turned on, that is, compared to when they're turned off. And then to relate that SNR advantage to speech intelligibility, we applied um, band important weights that were based on the speech intelligibility index. Uh, so for this arrangement, um, with noise coming from five speakers located to the side and the rear, there was um, about a four and a half to five and a half dB advantage due to conversation boost beam forming. And this correlates to uh, the directionality uh, in hearing aids, which increases speech intelligibility. There was also around about a two dB advantage um, due to ambient noise reduction 
Um, and noise reduction generally improves listening comfort. So we saw there were slight differences between hearing loss profiles, generally milder hearing losses um, with less amplification uh, showed less SNR advantage due to conversation boost. Uh, with a second more challenging arrangement with noise coming from all directions and out of all 16 speakers, um, these measurements were repeated. This time we've got a near normal audiogram in the hearing profile um, to match participants that we were had in a study that was running in parallel with AirPods Pro. Um, and compared to the unaided condition, um, we see the SII weighted SNR advantage um, overall of 5.3 dB, um, but 3.2 uh, when we're looking at just the conversation boost feature. And this can be compared to hearing aids um, with conventional directional microphones that provide a 3 to 6 dB SNR improvement in uh, diffuse noise. All right, so just uh, quickly referencing to a study that was run by um, Joaquin Valderrama Venezuela, where we were evaluating the benefits of AirPods Pro with normal hearing participants that had self-reported hearing and noise difficulties. And just on one of the results from that study, the speech and noise testing that was done with the same arrangement that we just showed, that arrangement two with the noise diffuse um, around the listener, the AirPods Pro provided a 12% increase in speech intelligibility compared to the unaided condition. And on subjective ratings, they said the, with the AirPods Pro, it was less mentally demanding, it improved performance and required less effort. Um, so just the last section, what are the capabilities and limitations of AirPods Pro? I've mentioned quite a few of these already. Um, so for capabilities, improved audibility of sound, improved SNR and reduced background noise. Um, other things to consider, the lower cost than hearing aids, uh, reduced stigma. Uh, some people don't like the look of traditional hearing aids. They have that active noise cancellation mode. And another good thing is that there's frequent firmware updates, so they're constantly um, getting new features without uh, you needing to do anything extra. Um, on the limitation side, we've seen that there's a limit control over the fitting parameters. You don't have that flexibility to adjust the fitting like you do with uh, hearing aid fitting software. The gain at the soft and the loud levels differs from some hearing aid prescriptions. I didn't mention previously, you can't set up the left and right ears separately. So the same profile actually gets um, used for both ears. So that may be an issue if someone has an asymmetrical hearing loss. Um, it also, they also lack some advanced features of hearing aids and uh, they're more for situational use, not for all day wear because of the battery life and some comfort issues. So uh, to close off um, as an overall summary, the AirPods Pro now include features that give them hearing aid like functionality, um, setting up the AirPods requires a number of steps and know-how to get the most out of these devices and tune them to individual needs. And I hope that the steps earlier can help with that. Um, our acoustic measures show that AirPods Pro provide frequency and level dependent amplification and improve the SNR in noisy environments. And while they do have limitations, they may be a good low cost situational use option for people with hearing difficulties that are not ready for hearing aids. So that um, brings us to a close. Uh, thanks for listening. I'd also like to thank um, my colleagues who have contributed to this work. So Jorge Mejia, Joaquin Valderrama Valenzuela and Brent Edwards. Mm -hmm.